Hello, good morning. Um, how are you doing? And I hope any, uh, I have any of my students, Prince online or Joshua online or the third guy in the construction class. Um, this is your lecture four for GIS, Geographic Information Systems. You have no excuse but to take part in this lecture. Uh, you know we're going through a very terrible time and if we have to take advantage of every opportunity. You have to make good use of every opportunity. Okay. Um, this is a time where we can move around a lot. So online teaching is important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Online teaching is very important. Um, you need to watch this video. Your assignments and quizzes are all ongoing. Everything is virtual. If your lecturer is not able to do that, that's 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 up to them. But for a lecturer who is willing to teach you this way, you have to go for it. Is that okay? At least you use your transport cost to probably buy data and watch the video. All right, so um, I'm hoping that at eight o'clock, this video is showing up for you to watch. I'm still online, I'm answering your questions. I'll see those who are watching at eight o'clock. All right, that's your lecture period. Okay, so without much ado, let's carry on. Stay safe though, all right? Stay safe, be washing your hands, it's very important. All right, um, this is not a time to be visiting a lot and going up and down. If you don't need to go out, don't go out. All right, we have to pick up these are daily habits, yeah, washing of hands and things like that, that are normal. There are things we are supposed to be doing already. So, COVID is not the one that's going to teach us, yeah, COVID is not the one teaching us how to wash our hands or so to keep good hygiene. All right, but all the same. Um, let's carry on with our lecture. Uh, we don't have much time. The bundle may not be even be big enough. So um, pay attention. Our topic today is uh, GIS data models or structures. So models and structures can be used interchangeably. I want you to know that um, it's just semantics. The model is the concept or the idea. The structure is the implementation. Okay, so GIS data models talk about two things that we all need to know, two words, keywords, the vector model and the raster model. Okay, so to you, a construction person, the vector is just using drawing lines and points and polygons to represent your world. So a building will be represented as a, as a polygon. And a tree will be represented as a point because a tree doesn't expand, you know, it's just um, uh, compact, are you okay? And it doesn't, it doesn't spread in terms of uh, the nature of it. When you look at it from the top, yeah, a tree can be represented as a point, all right? Uh, Rasta is also the use of pictures. You can use a picture, okay, to represent or uh, to explain the concept of raster by looking at a picture. A picture is made up of squares. And I remember walking past a painter, a very good artist, actually, not a painter, an artist in Kumasi, and I was in GSS at that time, so many years ago, you can imagine. And um, this man had drawn a lot of squares on the board. In fact, every time I passed, I watched him. And it seems that he was using the squares to draw and how interesting was that if at that time i couldn't appreciate it much but i think somehow now i do that every square received a certain color and he actually he drawn the squares on the canvas on which he was drawing or painting and then the picture for which he wanted to actually draw for or to paint okay so if he wanted to draw jerry john rollins or a jacko or any popular figure or Danado, you know, our current president, then they will take the picture, draw squares on it, draw squares on the canvas. The canvas is the, 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 the board on which they are drawing, they're painting. And then what they did was that they will simply um, transfer. When they see red in this square, they put this in there. That is the idea of the raster model. Are you okay? So the raster model is the concept of representing using squares and these squares on the computer are called pixels if i ask we go 
you appreciate it more. So the raster data structure divides the world into regular grid squares. Are you okay? So your the area that you want to represent or your target study area that you want to actually represent should be divided into squares and they have to be regular grid squares. Okay, a square is of the same dimension. Okay, so um, we are looking at dividing space into what squares. I believe you are following that. Okay, so look at it carefully. Other forms of polygonal meshes known as picture elements. Okay, so we can talk about pixels. Let's keep this one. I think it will help you. All right, now it's important for you to realize that in a, in a raster data structure, because we have gray squares, we can actually define the location of the cell by the row and column numbers. Is that okay? All right. So if I fast forward a bit, I can show you a picture. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Oh, where's it gone? Okay, all right, all right. So let's go back to where we were. <laughs> Hopefully once we come to that page. All right, so let's stay here. Now, the area that each cell represents defines the spatial resolution of the data. Okay, what do we mean by that? Every picture, okay, how fine the picture looks. Okay, this is a very nice picture that my iPhone has taken, all right? It's nice because of the squares, these small, small, small squares, and you have millions of them. And so that's why when you're buying a phone, you ask for the megapixel. The pixel actually stands for what? Picture elements, pixels, okay? picture elements. So take note of that. The area that each cell represents defines the spatial resolution of the data. So on the ground, if the square is a very large area, then it means that the representation is not going to be very good. You will find out soon why it's like that. The position of a geographic feature is recorded to the nearest pixel. That is why. So it means that if I pick a big pixel, then obviously we are going to generalize and say that, okay, this whole area is made up of water. So that is the idea of the raster data. So we, we actually give a value to every cell. As you can see, the value store for each cell indicates the type of object, the phenomenon or the condition that is found in that particular location. So if I find water, then I have to paint or give a value that represents water. Are you okay? In that. So we use numbers and alphabets to do that. So, for example, if I find water, I can put the number one. If I find uh, soil, okay, bare soil, then I can also put maybe two. So anytime I see one, it's water. Two is bare soil. I get that. All right. Then you you build up a table to actually explain which what the numbers actually mean. Now, different types of values can be coded. Integers, real numbers, alphabets, but normally numbers are used. Integer values act as code numbers. Which are referenced to names in an associated table. As I told you, we can have what we call a lookup table that explains the values that we have stored in the grid. Are you okay? So remember that the raster data structure is made up of grid cells, and the cells can be given values. Okay, and then these values represent what the, is there. Okay, so the attribute that is there, the type of object that we find there. All right. Now we can actually store as themes and layers okay we can also uh, use the raster data to keep all right or to implement the concept of themes and layers remember that data can be grouped so we can have one layer which indicates values are you okay concerning let's say temperature the next layer is about soil acidity and then we are having different values representing soil acidity in the cells but then for the same place. So the concept of layers apply to the raster data model. Okay. I don't know, I think there's something missing here, but 
seen something disappeared on this page. I hope I didn't delete anything. You're supposed to see a picture. I think there's a picture there. Not I think, but there is a picture there. So, uh, but I'll show you something that will help you to understand this better. So separate themes or layers, as we said, are possible. All right, but we can also have what we call the triangle, triangulated irregular network, which is the tin. So this is using cartoons a lot. Okay, so when you look at cartoon models, you see the character moving all over the place. It is possible that instead of using squares, you use triangles and then give values to the triangular facets or the face or the triangle. And then you tend to have a model you can intend to have a 3D impression as if it's a solid. Are you okay? So most cartoons look like that, um, as if they are made up of some kind of square. If you really get closer to it, for those of us who like cartoons, you know, we always come across, you know, that situation where the object looks almost like as if it's a, a solid. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. But it's not really, really a solid. It is simply um, an illusion. Are you okay? It's really an illusion. And so we can actually make use of triangles instead of what squares. Are you right? And then in that case, you have what we call the triangular, triangulated or triangular irregular network. I believe you are following. So it's, these are ideas that people came up with. And I believe we should not, we should embrace it. Are you okay? We should embrace it. We should embrace it. So as you can see, uh, that's what we have in, I'm showing you on the screen right now. This cartoon here is actually not solid, but it looks solid, doesn't it? Okay. So the concept, the idea, of representation so if we were to even represent a terrain okay we could also represent a terrain using the same concept and idea so you could represent your surfaces okay using the whole idea of uh, instead of squares then you are using what triangular or triangulated irregular network so it's very useful and of course every child <clears throat> enjoyed watching their cartoons so as you can see these are all like examples okay examples examples of uh, using 3d you know applic application of the basic units of representation a, a way of representing an object okay and so I won't take it too far you're a construction student so uh, I always try to reduce I don't want to go further than I need to is that okay so that's the triangulated irregular network for you and uh, it's it's kind of related when you talk about the raster data model we should think about the tin model if you like and then we can also have what we call the hierarchical tessellation don't worry yourself, yourself about that that's why it needs to be part of a lecture. Otherwise, you learn what you're not supposed to learn. The vector model is made up of points, lines, and polygons. So we all know what points are. A point is just a simple, say, what we call a dot or something like that. It doesn't go further than it's supposed to. Okay, so a point is just some kind of, this is too big for a point, but I'll just, you know, that's a point, if you can see that, and that's a line. The polygons are bounded, okay? Enclosed areas, <clears throat> they always enclose areas. Every polygon has to close it. It's made of a set of enclosing arcs, as we learned in topology. So a point, a line, and then a polygon. Is that okay? So how can we represent our world using points, lines, and polygons? You need to be thinking in terms of AutoCAD. Again, you know, that is vector for you. In AutoCAD, we draw points, lines, and polygons, nothing more. Now they are trying to integrate pictures and all that into it. Okay, but basically, that's what 
the vector model does. The whole world is represented as what lines and polygons. Okay. So you simply take a map or a line map and you know that you are looking at what a vector model. Is that okay? When you take a line map, you are looking at what a vector model. Okay. So going back to my cartoon, I'll just change it a little bit. I'll just take you to see what a line map really looks like. A line map look more like this, okay? As you can see, in this case, we are having the underground line map. Okay, I think this one is even the Delhi, Delhi, I mean India, yeah? These are line maps. You know, you can actually have more examples, okay? But for now, let me just show you this one. We have the landing tube map, okay? Coming up, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Etc. So, lines and points. You can see points and lines. You can see polygons. These areas are all, you know, polygons. Are you okay? And then lines. And then some test has also been added to it. So we need to appreciate the idea of points, lines, and polygons for representation. It's been done for years. It's not we are not we are not starting it now. No, it's been done for it's been there for years. Okay. So let's move on. Points, lines, polygons, you have to understand it. These are fundamental geographic primitive before. The satellite came in to take satellite images and cameras were developed. Obviously, it was just points, lines, and polygons that were used to make uh, maps, tax maps. People wanted, people needed to be taxed, etc. So maps have been there for years, millions of thousands of years. You have to be careful about the millions. <laughs> Can you take, I don't want to take us to the caveman. So polygons made are made up of a set of enclosing interconnected lines. Remember that. Meanwhile, lines are made up of, of what points, and then points are points. They are the basic. All right. So, points, lines, and polygons, as you can see in the right there. Okay. So at this point, you can see we have a set of polygons that that share the same boundary in terms of land ownership. So that's the idea of representing the world in the computer each point is told by its location x and y very simple so it's like graph theory those of you don't really know your you know who don't like maths yeah do you all remember our you know graph yeah so as you can see point number one is defined by this coordinate six yeah and then uh, seven over here so that gives us that so the computer stores this in this record and it's able to more or less plot it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm fine, okay? I'm not coughing at least. <laughs> I'm not sneezing. These are not the best of times to sneeze. Yeah, so we have a point being represented by a set of coordinates, okay? And then we can further reference this point, this special location, with what? An attribute. What do we find at this location? We find out that it is 12.35 units deep, or and there's an amount of 63 that can also be measured and more. Are you okay? There's a lot of information that can be collected at a particular point in time. So that's the idea of the storing points in your computer. Are you okay? Because GIS is make use of computer, they are computer systems. So we need to have a way to represent our world in the computer. Each line is stored by the sequence of first and last points together with the associated table. Are you okay? So you store the line, okay, by the first point and the last point. We want to call them the first node and the last node. Meanwhile, the first node and the last node are really points, which are also having, so point one and point three here, <clears throat> excuse me, have a dry through it. So point one and point three define a certain line or a node. Are you okay? So there we go. And then now we can take that and associate and give it what 
more attributes. In other words, we could have even continued in this direction, but okay. We, in, in computers, we can also do a join between tables. So it's possible to do that. And then we can now have a flow. So a water pipe, which has a flow of 960, I don't know, um, <laughs> speed, meters per second, I don't know if it is being realistic. But then we can, at the end of the day, visualize it. Okay, so GIS is always will show you, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a map. Are you okay? It's very important for you to know that. So this is a, a GIS software, and you can see how we can actually visualize. We can see the map of a place. Okay. I don't know if you can see what I can see. Yes, so this Burkina Faso, and it is interesting, isn't it? So if you wanted to talk about, um, say, the COVID and all that, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the most favorable topic right now. But obviously, if you wanted to understand a certain problem, this is the better way to look at our world. Are you okay, so that the lines in here are made up of what points and lines, and then the polygons. Are made up of lines, so a polygon is made up of nodes. Okay, uh, what do you call it? It's made up of yes, yeah, several nodes that are actually connecting lines, and then the lines bounding it, and you get a polygon. Are you right? So this is the idea. When you look at the way the storage is going, basically we will have just nodes being stored. Okay, I hope you are following. If you have a question, please type it. Um almost through the vector data model. But you should recognize that the vector data model has, say, two variants. You can have the spaghetti vector data model. You can have the hierarchical vector data model. Don't worry your head about it, okay? So um, I want you to know that these are just names to describe other interesting ways of representing what the same vector, points, lines, polygons. Are you okay? It's, it's a matter of semantics. Uh, I hardly ask questions on this kind of thing. I hardly ask questions. So um, take note of that. But then I want you to know that these are SS as well. Okay. So I think my images are not showing. So it's the software and this is really not the ideal thing. Um, I don't know whether I should pause or continue <laughs> because I need my images. Okay, so I'll use the internet rather. Okay, so you just stay tuned whilst I actually look for the vector and raster model compared. See, I can get an image to do that for you. Okay, maybe this will do a the same job. Okay, I have this one. So just stay on. And I'm trying to quickly get something for you. So I'll go back to my internet and I'll get you an image to explain further what I mean by representation using the raster and the vector model. Okay, so where am I? Where am I not getting this? Did I not copy the URL? Okay, all right, I have the URL. Okay, hold on a second, I'm almost done. Let me uh, copy this. Okay, so as you can see on your screen, that is vector. Vector is trying to represent a point like that, and then the raster is trying to also, the raster model is trying to represent the same word point. So this could be trees on the ground. But this is how the raster model will store it. All right. This is a picture. Trust me. If you reduce the squares to very tiny sizes, you won't even know that they are squares. So look closely on your computer and you will find out everything being displayed on your computer is actually squares. But then do you complain? You don't. You watch and you believe. You take pictures and you love them. And you're excited because the representation is so good. All right. But then it depends on the size of the pixel. So we will come very soon to the advantage and disadvantage of the raster and vector model. Is that okay? Also, I'd like to show you something in uh, about the 
raster data structure okay so let me just talk about it right now the raster data structure is made of columns and rows okay and the color there's a value to this this is the cell the cells are the smaller smaller squares okay now look at the line the line is not being accurately represented in the raster model so that's a disadvantage okay that's a disadvantage meanwhile the lines when we use lines the vector model does it very well doesn't it so linear features are easily represented also there's a lot of data to store so you see we're coming to the advantage and disadvantage of the raster and data model closely we are look at areas this is not doing a good job the raster is not doing a good job i will come to the vector model areas are being represented by polygons and i'm liking it okay because this is not a square but here we have a square so there's an issue it's a problem isn't it and so it's very important that we appreciate the differences between the two representations okay it's very very important that we find the differences it's very very important so um there are different variants of it so as you can see we have um, another example of course i wanted to even show you this one you can see clearly that we have a bad representation by the raster for the linear of this even for the if I for all the three, but the difference is that with the raster, you are seeing almost every area. There's what we call spatial variability. Everywhere you go, you can have a value. But for the for the vector, we are picking and choosing. So a, a surveyor goes to a site to survey the area and then decides to pick some trees and leave some. Are you okay? Things like that. But the the vector won't the raster won't do that. You're taking the picture from the sky if you like, and then we are getting every single area covered, except that there's a lot of generalization. So where you don't have, for example, if the blue area is water, where we don't even have water, the raster tends to, you see, actually show, are you okay, that there is some water. So um, that's, that is it. The raster data structure is storing, using numbers to store values, as you can see over here. Which is really not which is not bad are you okay we can do a whole analysis with it because it's in a matrix form we can do a whole lot of analysis with it by the row and column numbers so these are the columns these are the rows okay and then um, etc in fact there are a lot of applications of the raster data for now or raster model please for now this is where we take it to for construction students this is enough for you are you okay don't be uh, jealous you know or anything to whom much is given much is required so my images are gone so like i said resolution or how fine we're able to represent our data is always an issue are you okay and with the vector we can always see that data can be presented at this original resolution and form without any generalization so if there's a tree here that's a tree i go and stand there and have it the graph the graphic output is usually more aesthetically pleasing are you okay what does what do we mean beautiful in fact if someone tells you you are aesthetically pleasing it means you are very beautiful <laughs> okay it's just words english language okay so it means that we can keep the traditional cartographic representation. This is how maps have been drawn using what lines. The vector data or vector model is how maps have always been drawn. Okay. And so because of that, you don't need conversion. Conversion is not required because most it's always been vector has been the main thing. It's been the, the normal thing. Are you okay? And so we don't need conversion from vector. If I talk about conversion, talk about raster to vector and vector to raster. Accurate geographic location of data is maintained. So we talked about that already. That if I pick the corner of your building, it's your corner of your building. Meanwhile, the raster, the raster is divided the whole area into squares. And then the corner is now looking like okay, the middle of a square, that kind of thing. 
it allows sufficient encode of topology. Here, I want you to know that topology, the topic we talk about, it, topology is really the relationship between what geographic features, remember? And it's very much applicable to vector than raster. In fact, topology is not relevant to the, the raster concept. And so when we say it's efficient, it allows for efficient encode of topology. Then it means we are even overemphasizing. Okay. So we can actually have nodes and you know arcs and joining of arcs and all that in the raster, in the vector and not in the raster. Are you okay? And which also allows us to do proximity network analysis, etc. Okay, how close things are are easily done. Algorithms that do that really do that very well in the vector model and not in the raster. And so the disadvantages are obvious. Location has to be stored. Um, then, of course, we need to also have topology. We need, before we can do serious analysis, we need to have a, a topological structure. Um, and so, of course, we need that that will require, if at this point here links to this one, that will require serious cleansing of data. We need to clean the data. Otherwise, we can't do the analysis. Okay, because if you have a T-junction and it's looking more like a cross route, that's a terrible error, and you can't use that for transport application. Also, topology is static, and any updating or editing of the vector data requires rebuild of topology. Okay, so if I edit my data, then I could have created, you know, spurious polygons. Um, I could have overshoots and under under undershoots and overshoots. Sorry about that. And uh, etc. Algorithms may be processing intensive. Are you okay? Algorithms may be processing intensive. Let's take note of that. Um, often this is inherently limits. Okay, the functionality for large data sets. Are you okay? Etc. Continuous data such as elevation is not effectively represented. When you take a forest. Um, you'll be missing a lot if you use vector because you end up drawing one big polygon to represent a forest. Okay, so um, it makes it a bit uh, tricky, okay, compared to the raster. Raster will just do everything that you need for you, represent everything. So if the, the forest is having areas that, are, that have been cut, trees have been cut, are you okay? Then in that case, we will have a situation where we can't represent it very well with the raster, with the vector, but the raster, okay, will do a good job and then represent the forest. I'm trying to get you a forest view, okay, so that you can appreciate what I'm talking about. So if you actually hold on for a second, just a second, seven is a second, you'll be seeing, you know, a raster, what do you call it? a forest, <laughs> okay? This is a forest view, and then the raster will do a good job because it represents every small thing that we see in there. Are you okay? You'll be seeing all the trees, okay? The various species. These are, some areas are patched, some areas are very overgrown and lush. So all that will be well represented using the um, raster model. Meanwhile, the vector will do a very poor job and end up, you know, showing you just polygons only, okay? And then you'll be missing out. A lot of things should be just missing, okay? Because there will be generalization, okay? So um, let's take note of that. Let's move on a bit because we don't have a lot of data to use, we should be ending this lecture very soon, okay, um, on our vector and raster. I'm sure we are understanding this, so you will let your questions flow. Let me just pause for a minute. If you have a question, I'll just give you a few minutes. I'm going quiet for a while, just a few minutes. If you have questions, type them, because this is a live video, this is a lecture. So please ask the questions if you have one. Please ask a question if you have a question to ask. Do you understand the idea of vector? Points, lines, polygons, raster, 
this made up of four pixels, squares. Which squares? Are you okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So please let me have your thoughts. Any questions you have? Do you appreciate all that I've talked about so far? Ask a question and I'll quickly answer them. Okay, remember that all the advantages of the vector will look more like its advantage to the raster and vice versa. Are you okay? For example, continuous data will be easily what represented by the raster, but not by the vector. So elevation <clears throat> height, if you wanted to represent height using raster or vector, you realize that the vector represents height as point as what spot height. So every point you put you get a height over there. Meanwhile, the raster represents what every what every square will have a value. So the raster will do a good job, etc. So um, that is that. Please, uh, we'll have a quiz in our next lecture. I'll put the quiz out there. Okay, let me show you where all the materials are. If you haven't visited the site, I want you to actually look at it. Um, I don't know where I put this link. Uh, okay, it's gone. But please, I'm going to give you a quiz the next time we meet. All right, so that, that is it. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, you need a lot of storage if you are dealing with raster. I think that is one of the things you should know. We talked about resolution already, and there's a need for conversion too. Okay, vector to raster. If you want to take advantage of raster, you need to convert. Same for the other side as well. So this is it. Please ask your questions. Otherwise, please, I want you to also install this software, QGIS. Okay. Install the software and um, make sure that you do have it ready because we are going to do a tutorial and i want you to follow it please okay all right so thank you for your time and um, i'm going to see you again all your questions can also come through a phone call you can call me all right and i'll answer all your questions is that okay Take care of yourself. Wash your hands. As I said, it's very important. You wash your hands. Don't just go playing all around there. This is not a holiday. It's okay. People are, some people are so excited. But this is not a holiday. It's okay. Do all the things that you need to do. Okay. Do your assignments. Like I said, install the software. Okay, install the software. Don't waste time. Use your time wisely. Okay, so take care. And then, um, like I said, uh, I'll see you again same time next week. Bye bye.